Hello, it's Steve, and it is GeoRant time. It is March 24th, 2017, uh, approximately 0943. It is uh, 63 degrees Fahrenheit already in the morning. Um, I am currently driving through downtown Chicago, heading north. Um, today, I wanted to talk about plate tectonics, but before I do that, something interesting. I'm going way up north, um, and uh, even though it's 63 degrees here, the jet stream right now is north of me in Wisconsin, so once I get to the UP, temperature's going to drop about 20 degrees. But anyway, okay, so this is what I want to talk about with plate tectonics. Um, I want to talk about when did it begin? Okay, because um, a lot of geologists even get this wrong. Uh, there's just kind of this assumption that plate tectonics has been in operation since the Earth has had liquid water, and that's totally false. Um, well, how do we know when modern plate tectonics has started? How long will it last? Well, there's several reasons. There's a couple main reasons why we know in the distant past plate tectonics wasn't in operation. Uh, one of those things is when we look at the rock record, um, the, the rocks, their positions, and I'm talking rocks billions of years old here, like three billion, you know, four billion years old, what little of those we still have, um, we don't, they don't look like they formed in a plate tectonic regime. We aren't sure exactly what type of regime they formed in, but it's just, we don't see things like passive margins. We don't see things like well-developed subduction zones. We just don't see rocks that form in those environments. But there's something else that uh, um, tells us plate tectonics wasn't in operation billions and billions of years ago. Um, and that is the diamond. Yeah, the rock, you know, like a diamond. Um, a lot of diamonds will contain not just impurities that color them, uh, but they'll contain actual bits of rock in them, like minerals. Um, and these minerals can be identified. Now, we know diamonds form deep in the earth, okay? And, you know, so you, in order to get a diamond to form, you've got to have conditions right deep in the planet. And the formation of a diamond doesn't tell us anything about plate tectonics. What does tell us about plate tectonics is that little bit of mineral that might be inside of there. There are some minerals and rocks that only form at or near the Earth's surface, okay? And if one of those is trapped inside the diamond, we know that plate tectonics, plate tectonics or something close to it had to be in operation because in order for that diamond to form, it had to be deep under Earth. Well, how do you take something from the surface and get it encased in a diamond? Well, plate tectonics. You have a subduction zone. You have one plate going under another. And if there's something on top of that plate, something from the surface, it gets deep and eventually it gets into an environment where a diamond can form and magma will up well and bring it near the surface again. So we use those minerals to kind of ID if it was, I mean, you got some minerals that'll form in high pressure environments and on the surface, but we're looking for those that are unique to surface or near surface conditions for them to form. And we find when we look at that, that diamonds over 3.2 billion years old do not contain any surface minerals in them. Now, that's interesting, okay? That's strong evidence that plate tectonics was not in operation at all uh, from the formation of the Earth to 3.2 billion years ago. Now, at 3.2 billion years ago, we start to see them. But we have another problem. The rock record doesn't show us that we had full plate tectonics in operation at this time. We don't see evidence in the rock record for full-on blown plate tectonics until about two and a half billion years ago, mostly with the Huronian supergroup in Ontario or the Snowy Pass uh, group in Wyoming. These are passive margins uh, sediments. Uh, you know, when, a, when two plates rift apart, you get sediments that eventually come down on that continental margin 
and we, this is happening today still, you know, in the Gulf of Mexico, off the east coast of the United States, uh, the west end of Africa. So you, you get you get these passive margin sediments, and the Hernian Supergroup is the first one to record that. So that's where we consider modern plate tectonics to actually have started became the dominant form of the way Earth loses its internal heat. We still do not have a full plate, full blown plate tectonic system. We still have things like hot spots. You have Hawaii, you have Yellowstone, but the Earth loses its heat about 98, 99% of it nowadays through plate tectonics. And that started about two and a half billion years ago. Um, how long will it continue? Well, it depends on, uh, many factors. It depends on the cooling of the core, mainly. Um, it depends on uh, the position of the moon, because uh, the moon is slowly moving outwards. Um, but we probably have a good billion to two billion years left of plate tectonics. Um, but uh, something interesting, too, is why does Earth have plate tectonics and no other planet in the solar system does? Well, it's probably likely that Earth is near that minimum mass needed for a planet to actually have plate tectonics. Because Venus, which is closer to the Sun, um, seems to have a semi-plate tectonic regime going. It seems to kind of have it uh, a little bit, uh, but it also massively resurfaces itself through volcanism. So, and Venus is really close to the size of the Earth, just a little smaller. It's also a lot hotter on the surface, but Venus doesn't have a moon either. So if Earth didn't have a moon and was a little closer to the sun, would it ever have developed plate tectonics, at least full blown plate tectonics? I don't know, I doubt it, but who knows? Um, and actually, the Venusian way, the way Venus loses its internal heat may have been the way Earth did prior to plate tectonics, um, or in that transition zone. So from about, from about the formation of the Earth at four and a half billion years ago to 3.2 billion years ago, we didn't have plate tectonics. We still don't know what that is. Like I said, it may be a Venusian type thing. It may not have been anything like that at all. From about two and a half to, th or from about 3.2 to two and a half billion years ago, we had the transition to modern plate tectonics. We had something that resembled plate tectonics in action, but not totally. Uh, I mean, we do see evidence of subduction zones, but we do, like I said, we don't get those massive passive margins that we start seeing at two and a half billion years ago. Um, so that may have been, you know, more of a hot spot type uh, regime, uh, more similar to Venus. I mean, you sh I'm sure you had rifts, but it may have been massive rifts. Um, but um, anyway, I just wanted to clear up the fact that, because uh, I see it a lot, even in documentaries about the history of the Earth, where they'll use, like, like the making of North America. I love that series, but they do sit there and it, sit there and mention plate tectonics at four billion years ago, and it wasn't in operation then. But what does that mean for life? Well, plate tectonics might be necessary for complex life to evolve, but we had life before modern plate tectonics. Um, three and a half billion years, but it was all microbial. As a matter of fact, microbes are all we really had until about a billion years ago um, that we know of for sure. And then we didn't, and even when complex life did evolve, uh, maybe at about 1.1 billion years ago, maybe 800 million, somewhere in that range, we didn't get things like trilobites and brachiopods and you know, massive, complex animals until about 540 million years ago. So even though complex life was around, it still took a while to get going. Um, and plate tectonics may be necessary for that because what plate tectonics does is it brings nutrient-rich minerals to the surface that otherwise wouldn't. Um, but uh, that leads me into something else about um, habitable zones and something like that, but I will get into that in another geo rant. Um, but that's it for today. I hope you learned something.